Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. It is Tuesday, April 30th. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. The band is back together again. It's been a while. It, it certainly has been. How is, uh, how is everything going? Going well. It's going, it, this is my busy part of the year. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you. Weather's beautiful. People are building houses, which is a good thing for our community and a good thing for my pocketbook. You got that right. So we, we missed you during the NFL draft. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got free tickets to go see the end games early. Yep. And uh, I, I could have passed it up. But it was with a guy that that I'm good buddies with, and and I just wanted to spend that time with him. I can uh, I can understand. Next it. year, I'm making it a priority to commit to nothing, because we're, we're hopefully going to be in Vegas. I, I, that is my greatest goal right now. Now we we talked about this off the air, but they're doing it on the Vegas Strip. Doing they're going to shut down the Strip, just like Broadway shut down. But Broadway is one thing. The Vegas do you, Strip is another. Do you think that the Vegas Strip will be as ridiculous for the draft, like will it will Vegas break records that Nashville just broke? No, and here's why: not a shot at people on the West Coast, but they just don't care as much as people in the South. Yeah, I, I agree. Football is what we have. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just what we do. Well, it's what we focus on. That's right. Right. I mean, that's the, people in Nashville. It Nashville is a melting pot. That's right. There will be more people at Laker games. Warriors games, Clippers games, then there will be at Chargers football games. Yeah. Oh, that would well, never it, happen. And that's a football team that yeah. made it to the playoffs and is really, really good. Like, that's one of yeah, the but premier in, teams in the league right now. Yeah, but they're not flashy. I think they're flashy enough. Well, I mean, it, yeah, they're flashy enough. I like enough. defense. I think – I think Ingram, I think Bosa are, are probably the scariest one-two combination in the league. And Gordon, when he's healthy, is super flashy. Oh, crazy. Crazy flashy. So, that's a, yeah, the guys uh, the guys from Westlock Pirates They're awesome. and myself had a, uh, a good time. They all thought that you were taking your, your daughters to the movie. Oh, gosh, no. And, no. Uh, and I said, no. They don't know no. me very well. I said, he's we- with one of uh, – He's with one of his buddies, actually, right now. No, listen, listen. I'm not passing up the draft to spend time with my kids. I'm not that good of a dad. I'm not that good of a dad, guys. That's uh. <laughs> I, I not, mean, I could disagree with that. I think uh, you're a fine dad. That's. I appreciate you saying that. But we all know better. <laughs> <laughs> I know where I stand at all times. That's. I like how uh the on the video, mm-hmm. like the YouTube video for uh for the live draft thing that we did, uh it caught me mid drink. Of a Bud Light, and I saw it and was like, "Yeah, we're just we're gonna roll with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, not changing it. I'm just gonna keep, because that's what kind of night it was. That's right. Uh, it didn't go live until 10:30. It was supposed to go live at 8:30. It, it was happens. an absolute disaster. We have we won't be making that mistake again. No, we'll say no. that. So we'll make different mistakes, but not that one. Oh yeah. I mean, we're. It, I told them on the show, it's not a winning cures everything show if something doesn't go wrong. If it ever becomes like a polished thing, I'm out. That's, I'm just out. Like we're well, not, we're gonna have to listen, stop doing it at that point. We're, listen, we're we're Mississippi bumpkins, okay? Yeah. At the end of the day, we, we want to be professional. We want to do a nice show, but come on now, we what makes us who we are are flaws. This is entirely true. Uh, this is winning cures everything. This is podcast number two seventy five. Think that's right. And I lost count. Two seventy six, two seventy a year. Ago. It's two seventy something. <laughs> um, but it is the Tuesday, April thirtieth edition of the show. It's the last day in April. We're getting ready for May. We're in Memphis, so of course there's Memphis in May. It's the Bill Street Music Festival. So you doing the uh, the barbecue fest thing again? I am doing the barbecue festival thing. How long year. have you done that? Uh, last year I actually took off. I went down to party one night, but I didn't actually compete. Um, five or six years? No, longer than that. About eight years. That's a long two, time. Two different teams. Two different teams. So, but you're competing this year. I think I'm gonna be on the team I was on. When we came in fourth overall in ribs. Ooh, three years ago. That's not bad. Yeah, those guys are fantastic. They yeah. just they, there's a guy named Johnny Smith. Pretty, I don't have a problem saying his name because if you Google Johnny Smith, you're just not gonna be able to find anybody special. Um, <laughs> it's just a, the, the most generic name you're gonna yeah. get. 
that guy could cook a shoe and I'd eat it. He really is the best cook I've ever done. He has stopped doing barbecue competitions locally and he started doing steak cook offs. Oh, really? And, and man, listen, when they say, oh, you got to cook these four ribeyes and the judges are going to only eat two, you know, that's just a, that's just a yeah. hard thing to. Now, you, to you're right about up. that. That's you were. Uh, yeah, that, that's a real good weekend. That's I've, I don't know that I've ever been to a steak cook-off. Yeah, a lot quicker. Yeah. The barbecue competitions, we end up sleeping in the truck a lot. Yeah. We start cooking at midnight because turn ins at like 9 a.m. the next morning. Yeah, and you can't just leave it overnight, right? I oh, mean, that's, no. no, you got to baby it. you got to baby it. you got to know exactly what you're doing. Uh, here are the topics for today. NFL draft grades, Mel Kuyper's 2020 top NFL prospects. Uh, we'll see. At, should we talk about how wrong they were last year? <laughs> we we could we could we could do part that. of what I want to do now is go backwards a little bit and talk about that. Um, you know what? I'll pull that up. Uh, we're going to talk about that. the NBA semifinals, uh, and then we're going to talk about the NCAA's denial of two guys that wanted to play immediately at different schools because of family issues, and what they've done. And and we'll let Chris kind of bash on the NCAA for a little bit because it's one of our favorite things to do. It's my favorite thing. It, it's definitely uh, it's definitely one of yours. I'll, I'll give That's you that. Right. Right. Um, so let's uh, let's start off with this NFL draft grade. Tell me how you would like to. God, I don't know what, who was the guy that we found that we liked his grades the best. So WalterFootball.com. All right. So we were looking for graph, draft grades over the last couple of days, and everybody who has like an affiliation with the NFL and who's like a beat writer for these teams. Nobody got worse than a C. And everybody pretty much got A's and B's. And I'm thinking, yeah. how how the hell does this work? Like we we just we're just we're literally at a point where everybody is just going to pass. We're just passing everyone and they all did a good job. So, this is something that I'm going to start working on this year and I just did a quick glance at A, the way I grade it was based strictly on value. Because we have no idea what these players are going to be like. We have no idea what these real grades are going to end up like. So so I didn't draft based on – I didn't grade my drafts based on, like, who, who – Like value at certain right. positions it's or anything strict, like that. It was strictly off of value. Yeah, it because – strictly like, off of what I think this team had the opportunity to take and what they ended up taking. No, but not not value based on like the value of the specific picks because that's what Walter Football did. No, that's what I want. I like him. No, oh, that's you what you I'm like doing. what he no, did. I don't like what the CBS guys and the NFL.com guys and all those guys did because they just pretty much said everybody passed, and you don't know that everybody passed. So I went back. I think football is is played and prepared in a, in a three day, three year windows. Okay? okay. I think anybody who thinks I know what this team is going to be like five years from now, you're wrong. You're fooling yourself. You have no idea. Um, it, it, I think you can prepare and plan for a three year span. So with that being said, I actually look back at three years ago. Yeah. That draft, 2016, 2016 draft. And we're not going to go through it. I went through the entire first round just to kind of see. And I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five. Top five picks, I think, all all, killed all hit. I think, wow, I wonder how rare that is. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever done it. Outside of the top five, I've got one, two other guys that I would say real game changers for their team. Now, that doesn't mean yeah. everybody's a bust. Other guys start it two, three years. They're regular contributors, but they're not. These are first round picks. They're not stars. No, they're not. No, they're not really affecting their team in a noticeable way that 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 changes the identity of the team or, or gives them some sort of, of identity or culture. That's pretty bad. Like that's that's really bad. It, it makes it, you wonder if it's like that every single season. Did we grade all of these guys as A's and B's and C's because these players didn't pan out? I mean, you you do have a valid point, but I, I wonder because nobody ever really looks back, right? No, no it's one goes a, backwards. But I, what's I, uh, uh, Malcolm mis- Gladwell? Revisionist history. I, know, I, know, I like, love. Oh, I, that's my guy. Yeah. single smartest person on the planet. Um, so, I, and I kind of get this shtick from Bill Simmons when he talks about um, the Oscars every year. He says we shouldn't give the Oscars out for this year. We should wait 
and give the Oscars out like the Hall of Fame. Every five years, we're yeah. going to look back five years ago and look at the movies and see how impactful they were, how good they were. How do we review them then? Because now we're not falling into people campaigning and things of that nature. We're just actually looking at it from an artistic perspective to see what it is. I don't think in the NFL, in football, you can go back five years, but I do think you can go back three. And, yeah. and I'm going to make it my challenge for next year's draft – I'm going to have 2017's draft down to the nuts and bolts of who won that thing, who lost that thing. I'm going to grade those GMs. We're going to find out what GMs are still at the jobs they were. Not many. And and let's just see who's good at this and who's not. Yeah. Then we can actually put a grade on it. You can't grade how these guys did last weekend. We have no idea. There's no, a couple of guys it, I think – Based on potential – Everybody, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna would give, basically do well. So we're gonna do winners and losers, right? Before we get into what that guy thinks, because okay. I actually disagree with with this guy, which I love his website though. I mean, really, yeah, and we're we're gonna fly because it's 32. We're gonna really fly glad we we found him. But but one of my big winners was Seattle. Okay, now he actually yeah. gave Seattle like a D. He thought yeah. they did bad. Seattle came into this off season with four draft picks. Yeah. They made 11 picks over the weekend. They well, got his, 11 bites at the apple. His problem with the draft, though, was... They thought they, they reached were, for everybody. But they reached for everybody, and they did everything based on need as opposed to... Best player available. Best, best player available, and, and the value of the pick, That's right? right. Like, which, and is, which is what I, I don't usually like. I just disagree with them a little bit. I think their first pick in, in Collier, I think is who it was. Yeah, LJ Collier from um, TCU. Yeah. I think that's a real defensive player that would fit Pete Carroll's scheme. He's a tough guy, but he also coming out of Gary Patterson's system, that guy knows how to read offenses. He knows how to, which I mean he's an edge guy, so there's not a whole lot to read. You go get the quarterback, you protect the edge. But but he knows how to play this game. Okay? His, uh, his problem with uh, Collier was not necessarily just Collier himself – but could've, the value of the pick, because he would have been there in, in the right. 50s. Well, but here's the thing. Seattle already traded back, got more picks, traded back again, got more picks. At some point in time, you can't keep trading back because nobody's going to keep trading with you. You, you done trade it back twice, so you got to take your guy. Yeah. And if he's the guy on your board, you just take your guy. If they wouldn't have never traded back to get extra picks, then I would agree with him. And then the one guy I love that I think they got was DK Metcalf. So many people, when when the combine happened, everybody loved This is what we do in the media, though. We love a guy, and then we say, whoa, man, I've written a lot of things about how good this guy is, but he kind of sucks at some stuff. So now I'm going to spend the next six weeks crapping on him. And, yeah. and, and this, is, this is the world we live in, is we can only say so many good things until we run out. And then, man, I can't keep writing the same stuff, but my boss says i got to keep writing. Well, let me let me write about the same guy because I know everything about him now. I'm yeah. just going to turn it all around and make him make him bad instead of good. And so everybody started dumping all over him. I cannot think that he found a better place than Seattle and Russell Wilson. He's got Tyler Lockett on the other side, which is a complete speed demon, but a different kind of receiver. Small, flashy, fast, can run every route, and then you've got a monster like DK on the other side that can play. It's just going to be a matchup nightmare. Yeah, Bill Belichick is the master of this, and it ain't about what you can can't do. Tell me what a guy can do, and then we just find matchups. There's nobody on the Patriots that has played receiver for the last six years. Yeah, Randy's been longer than six, right? That 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 like that's a professional what, what, football player. What year was in Randy? The NFL. What year was Randy Moss? Oh, 2012. Yeah, that was when they went undefeated, and then the year after when Tom got hurt. What was that, 20, 2012, 2013? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean. But, but like, he doesn't care what you can do, can't do. He, tell me what you can do, and let's do that. I think DK is going to be great in Seattle. Yeah. So I would give them a winning grade. And then a team that got a lot of good dudes, made a lot of good picks. Yeah. Is the Raiders? No, they had a lot of picks. Okay, got yeah. three first round picks. You probably shouldn't screw that up. I, so, it, yes, I think they took Cleveland Farrell a little too early, but but if that's your dude, if that's your guy. But the problem is, is literally you had Jacksonville 
and Buffalo begging to move up to go get their guys. Yeah. They're calling everybody saying, I want to move up, I want to move up, I want to move up, I got to get my guy, I got to get my guy. And you could have done it. You could have done it. You could have gotten even more picks than what you already had. Why and... did you not do that? Not that the dude you took is going to be a bust. Clemson fans don't come at me. Alabama fans don't come at me. But, like, you could have taken those guys later. Yeah, you could have taken. And that's a bad Yeah. Play. So the difference between Seattle and the and the Raiders is one's a good football team trying to get a little bit better, make it back to the playoffs, rebuild. They got a stable quarterback that's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. The other team, I know you made a bunch of moves in the offseason. You got a lot of draft picks, but they've been a shit show for the last couple of years. Yeah. They're garbage. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Like, you can't if, – if the Raiders and Seattle – draft the exact same way one team could be a winner and the other team could be a loser because one team is not set up to draft that way does that yeah, make I agree sense at all yeah no no no. i feel I, like I'm, I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be no 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 I, I think it's you you explain it in layman's terms and i think that works out well i think that works out well who uh do you want to go through the rest of your winners or you want to go team by team we can go team by team arizona cardinals so walter football gives them a b plus uh, he said the Cardinals have to either trade the first overall pick or select Kyler Murray. The latter isn't an option because Josh Rosen doesn't care about football. That's what he said. Yeah. Um, he said it's because the Cardinals will be losing out on a valuable asset by selecting Nick Bosa. If they choose Murray, they can turn on to uh, they can turn Rosen into a second round pick, which they did. Mm-hmm. Um, it, he said though uh, there there were some reports leading up to the NFL draft that the Cardinals would not select Murray. They ultimately made the right decision, found a huge upgrade over last year's Mike, uh, uh, first round draft bust. Sorry. Um, he said they added some receivers to complement Murray, making sure the cupboard will not be bare aside from Christian Kirk once Larry Fitzgerald retires. Uh, they drafted Andy Isabella for the slot, uh, Hakeem Butler, big still in the fourth round. Uh, Cardinals will, uh, will have better blocking next year because of the Marcus Gilbert signing. But blocking is still an issue. They did not sign enough blockers. They didn't draft enough offensive linemen, which this was an offensive line heavy draft. Yeah. You could have got those guys. Those guys would have been better than receivers because receivers in the NFL, A, are dime a dozen. You just go yeah. find one. And B, they take a year or two to develop. And if you're going to throw a rookie out there, I'd rather throw a rookie out there with some offensive line and – some older receivers that yeah. know how to play in the league but might not be as athletic than young, flashy receivers that are hot new toys and well, nobody and protected. Kyler has never played behind a not great offensive, offensive line. line. He's also never played against great defenses being in the Big 12. That is a shot. Yeah. But that's yeah. the truth. No, it's absolutely it's the absolutely truth. truth. Yeah. Uh, San Francisco 49ers. Give B minus. I think that's okay. I like their first two picks a lot. I don't I, like them I'm much the only after they person did that. on the planet that thinks that Nick Bosa could end up being a bust. I really feel that way. Okay, I, this is wrong of me, but pedigree. His uncle was a first round pick and played in the league for a long time. His daddy, a first round pick, played in the league for a long time, and his brother is one of the top four defensive players in all the league when he's healthy. Uh, he's healthy all the time now. He was unhealthy his first year for like the first four to six weeks. And then after that, Man. he's been a freak. He didn't miss any plum last year. He wrecked the league. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I'm the only person that thinks that. You are the only person that thinks that. Which is totally fine. I'm used to being wrong. No, you're That's not. Okay. No, you're good. And I love, you know this, I love Debo Samuels. Yes. I love yeah. Debo Samuels. De- I think Debo, he I think has a great. chance to be the Best receiver in this draft. Okay. We I, didn't do many shows going up to it, and I didn't get to say crazy stuff beforehand. I think he has a chance to be the best receiver in this draft. I think A.J. Brown nope. was the best receiver in the draft. Nope. And let me tell you why. Because Marcus Mariota is never going to play more than 10 games. And when Marcus is not playing, they don't have a quarterback. Well... Okay, how about Titans, this? As far as the talent Titans, goes, no, but no, but it doesn't. You can't do that. You can't just say as far as talent goes because I don't care how much talent you have if you can't get the ball. Okay, okay, okay. I'm with you. I understand that aspect of it. Uh, Debo Samuels, yes. Uh, they they drafted a punter. 
I know. I in San Francisco. That, and I'm not I'm not a fan of the Jalen pick. The the Jalen Hurd, yeah. The, you cannot do that. I, they that, have so many needs. It was really early. They need secondary help like nobody in the league. And they were just like, we're not going to do it. And there were tons of cornerbacks and safeties that fell to the second and third round. Yeah, they Those could have taken. Those guys were there. And you took Jalen. And I, I'm not and, trying and you to took, crap on Jalen. And you but, took Debo. And you. Uh, I I think deep like and Debo is fine. Offensive, offensively, outside of Kittle, they don't have any receivers, man. They got to get why they went they after the receivers. Get, there, they got to get Garoppolo. But once you you don't need ten receivers, just get no. one and you're fine. Yeah, get one go to guy, and you have a backfield that's loaded. Yeah. So I think you're okay offensively. You got to get some defense because they were trash. Yeah, they and and they did nothing to no, help that. Nothing. Uh, New York Jets C plus grade. I, I, I think Quentin Williams has a chance to be one of the best players in this draft. I can't speak intelligently about anybody else they took. Uh, so, Polite uh, from Florida, he, yeah, he I, fell. He fell. Um, but, I, like, I like him. As far as everybody else. It, that's it. I got, I got I, I, I'm not going to act like I know who they are and, and where they came from. Yeah. I'm, I'm just. Um, now, now, Williams, they, they got a C-plus here, mainly based on the fact that they took Williams at three, but Williams was not who Greg Williams wanted. Yeah, well, Greg Williams get over himself. This guy's a beast. Well, and it, they wanted so Greg Williams wanted Ed Oliver. I think the franchise the right wanted Quentin Williams. The franchise made the right decision. Oh, I agree. Franchise made the right decision. And so I I agree a hundred percent. Okay. Uh, the Jets made uh, two solid choices early to improve their front seven including Williams and uh, Polite. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chuma, Edoga, tight end, Trevon, Wesco. Uh, I mean, other than that, I got nothing I, I, on I them. I literally, I'm not going to try to, yeah, I don't know anything about them. Oakland Raiders, B-. minus. Do you give them a B- minus because they had three first-round picks? Um, I think they actually got, like, I think they drafted good dudes. See, that's where we – so, I'm not in love with Josh Jacobs, mainly because – what he did at Alabama, he's just not going to be able to do in Oakland. He's not going to have that kind of offensive line. The other play, skill players around him aren't going to be nearly as good to take that much attention off him. Yeah, you might and, be right on that. And the quarterback to get him the ball ain't close to what Tua was. No, you're right. You're I right. just don't think he's going to be capable of doing what he did at Alabama because so much of what he does, he needs people to not pay attention to him. Yeah. He needs to get out in space and get lost. And if you think Antonio Brown's going to take all the attention, you haven't been watching football long. No. The dude's over 30 now. And and, and, and people are going to hone in on him, but Jacobs is going to be the second guy they hone in on. I like the Hunter Renfro pick. I like the uh, the Foster Moreau pick. Uh, Isaiah Johnson I thought was pretty good. Like I, uh, they, I think they got some decent dudes. Like, I, don't I think, think it's John, bad at all. I think John Gruden watched the national championship game and said, wow, these guys are good. I'm just going to take all of them. Yeah, he's, I'm going to take one Alabama guy, and I'm going to take three Clemson guys. And that's that's it. And and my biggest problem – And that, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with picking winners. You know? My biggest pro- – well, Washington has 20 Alabama guys, and we see how good that's worked out. So. Yeah, I know. What is um, it? Because – they keep drafting the ones that get hurt every that's, But that's, freaking... that's part at, – at some point, yeah. that's part of it. My problem with the Farrell pick is I think Josh Allen's going to be the best player in this draft. Yes. And I I understand why the first three picks went the way they did. At some point in time, I think, if you really want to change your franchise, you grab Josh Allen right here in Oakland. Yeah. That – they draft Josh. At Josh Allen and, would, would and replace I feel, Khalil Mack. I feel like, yes, I feel completely different about the Khalil Mack trade, which that's not the pick that you gave up for yeah. Khalil. But I feel completely different about this draft also. Yeah. That's that's it. I think that guy last year I was all in on Roquan. Still all in on Roquan, by the way. Yeah. i I'm all I'm all in on Josh Allen in this draft. Uh Tampa Bay Bucks got an A minus. I don't know how they got an A minus. I love Devin White. You know that. I don't like much else that they did, and they drafted another damn kicker. Yeah. That who was the guy? Matt uh, Matt guy. Yeah, out of Utah. Hey, but uh, look, come on, man. We, we've watched him. He was awesome. 
It doesn't. Uh, they got. Uh, let's see. Who do they get? No kickers ever. Uh, Jamel Dean yeah. from Auburn. Auburn cornerback. Now he and and he Sean real, Bunting yeah, from he, from Auburn. Is, yeah. Or uh, from uh, Central Michigan. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, Devin White. I think great pick right there. Devin White. Care he anchors this. He could be the best player in this. I like middle linebackers better than a lot of people like outside linebackers. They like the guys that get sacks. I like the guys that are quarterbacks on the field. Um, man, I'm just not a fan of this. And you're a bad team with a million holes to field. You can't be wasting draft picks on kickers. They drafted one three years ago. He didn't stay on the roster more than two years. He didn't stay on the roster – he, he, he was more than one, a year. He wasn't was it? a year, and then he made it to mini camp and training camp, and he got and he, he got, got cut. cut. Um, it, but that what was that like a second round pick? Was the third, round, pick. third round pick. But still, that's Either crazy. Way. Yeah, Anthony Nelson, great value pick there from Iowa yeah. defensive end. No, they got uh, some, they got some they, dudes. they got some they, they got, got some, good value. But they got a million holes, man. They're a bad team. Yeah, they got a lot of things to fill. Yeah, you right about that. I don't know how that GM still has a job. That's one guy that I'm when I go into my deep dive. I don't think he's drafted well ever. Probably like not. Like ever. But let, do you want to talk about – At some point in time, like, yeah, you got Mike Evans. Okay. You've had – I want like, like to see what they're going to do with Jameis. I want to see like what that. they're going to do with Jameis after this year. I hope put him on a bus. Give him a ticket back what? to Alabama. You would hope so. That's what I want. Ta- speaking of GMs that may not have a job for long, Dave Gettleman <laughs> and the New York Giants uh, are first D. Can we can we say something? Real, let me let me. So I've, I've heard of. I agree with this being a bad pick. Daniel Jones seems like a really good dude. We talked and on that. Yes, I'm sure he's talk great. About that? We I talked about Scuzz, him being a good dude. We also Scuzz talked just, about r- just crushed this had, guy's yes, life. Yes, he had a field day but, with this. But pick. my problem is this: he, it he ain't said, his fault that the guy's a dummy. No, no, no. It, him. Yeah, you can't. We can't make fun of Daniel Jones, but you can make fun of Dave Gettleman. Oh no, you need to make fun of Dave Gettleman. Yeah, Dave that's Gettleman's what mama needs to be that's, ashamed. Of him. That's what we did. Um, he didn't get invited over but, Sunday, did But he? the the tweet that was brought up on the podcast or on the live stream, whatever, was uh, Daniel Jones looks like somebody that would play Eli Manning in a movie about Peyton Manning's life. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's it. That's it. That's, that's it. He he looks exactly like an Eli Manning guy. He's friends with the Mannings. He's and and this could end up being great, and we could all look foolish. But the odds of that happening are I'll very, take my, I'll very. I'll take slim. my chances with my jokes. Yes, that's I'm, exactly. I'm what very I'm, comfortable. Just I'm going to make my jokes, and we'll see how it goes. I do think that Dexter Lawrence is a pretty good pick. I was just about to say um, that's the pick I like. Yeah, that's and then the pick I like. DeAndre Baker. Maybe not so much because I think you could have gotten him in the second, second round, round, even in, even in the third yeah, round. Yeah, they, they traded back up to get him. Like you're giving. This is a team that's not great. You got yeah. a lot of things to feel. Why are you giving up picks? Why are you giving up assets to move back in the first round? To get a guy that wasn't a first round guy. Now, I understand that there is this concept of, well, if I get him in the first round, I get him for the extra year. Man, I really care about that for quarterbacks. Not and so maybe, much for cornerbacks. And maybe running backs. Those are the only two positions that I really worry about. Running back, because after five years, you're pretty much done, and yeah. so I got you on the cheap your whole career. And quarterback, it just they're just so valuable; it matters. Yeah. Everybody else, I'm not trading back up to get that extra year for you. No, I agree. I just don't. So we we'll go back to value. I don't think Edelman, Gettleman, Julian didn't draft. I don't think Gettleman, <laughs> just like Gruden and those guys, Mayock. I don't think they understand about value. They don't understand you don't spend a four when you can spend an eight. And yeah. and to get back to that eight, you could pick up a three and a four. You know, like or, it, or anything else. That's right. Like, like it doesn't it doesn't matter like <clears throat> anything is a better value than <clears throat> than just than just taking him and, and, and everyone says, Yeah, but if you don't get your guy, you don't get your... I think at some point in time it's such a crapshoot. You're going when, to get a when guy. I start doing these reviews, I'm gonna tell you Fifty percent of first round picks are bust. Yeah, are just flat. Not just like oh they weren't great, but they're they're flat ass bust. Yeah, fifty. It's a coin flip, man. So give the Patriots do this better than anybody, and that's why I like what the Seahawks did. Give me as many bites at the apple as I can get. Yeah, because 
That's why like, the Giants getting three first-round picks, That's right. one of them will probably pan out. Uh, yeah, that's right. I think one of them might, but but there's a chance that they have three out of 32. There's a really good chance that none of them do. Yeah, it's entirely possible. I think the uh, the best value, the best maybe the best player that they got was Julian Love. You remember the difference? Oh yeah, yeah. when he went when out, he went out yep. for Notre Dame against Clemson, yep. where they Chains had held the him to what I think a field goal. No, love, um, love that Notre Dame had some dudes get drafted, and they all got drafted late. They all yeah. got drafted. Chargers are on my list of teams I like, and man, I'm I I think Notre Dame. I think that's going to help them with recruiting and take them to that kind of next level of oh, the yeah. school that they're in. You start getting guys in on Sundays because it's been a couple of years since we've had a lot of Golden Domers playing on Sundays. Yes, I agree. And now we're, we're about to get some dudes. Jacksonville Jaguars, A minus. We're going to have to start to run through this because we're 30 minutes in already. We can. Uh, Jaguars, they uh, they paid a bunch for Nick Foles. They, they got an A minus on the draft. The offensive line was the area that they really needed to hit. They definitely did that. Uh, Josh Allen, I think. And and you do as well. Best player in the draft. I think he's the best player in the draft. Um, who else did we get? Uh, Jawan Taylor. Look at my boy insane right here. value pick. Gardner Minshew, That's backup quarterback. No, he um, be backing for long. You think he's going to start no. over Foles? Matt, no, not this year, but give him a year. Give him three years. Give him a year or two. Give him three years. Magic Nick, uh, hit the bricks, baby. They, they did not. So they got going one the offensive tackle. They got Josh Oliver, tight end from San Jose State. Uh, Quincy Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, linebacker from uh, Alabama. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think the Jaguars I think they, were fine. I, did, I I like their draft. I think they did good, and I, th- I think they potentially got the best player in the draft. Yeah, I I think that Josh Allen value. When we come back three crazy. years from now, we're gonna be like, how the hell did this guy go seventh? And who is who is David Jones? Detroit Lions. You see what I did there? David Jones. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Detroit Lions, a B minus. Oh, okay. Uh, T.J. Hawkinson, real deal. Yep. I like him a lot. I I thought that the Patriots were going to do whatever they had to to get him. Nope. Bill Bill will never do that for any player. Yeah, I think you're probably right. He's never going to move up. No. No. He almost change up. Last year, people thought he would move up to the Giants if Baker didn't go one to go two. I've never seen Bill move up before in the first round. Yeah. Um, aside from that, I mean, you see anybody that? Uh, nope. Yeah. I mean, it like it's a B minus. This looks like if if I had to say the best player in this draft that they took, I think Will Harris has a chance as safety to play safety in the NFL. It, tell me this: Is there another coach out there that's from the Belichick tree that has a chance to be successful the way that Patricia does? I think that he does things the exact same way that Belichick does. He's trying. Like this, this draft looked exactly like mm. a a New England draft. The, the difference is, is all the Patriots players that they drafted, I like, but and that's not because I'm a Pats guy. I like better than all of the the picks that the Lions made. I mean, I could believe I'll, that. I'll take Harry over 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 uh, Hawkinson. Hawkinson. I'll you know I'll, I'll take their cornerback over. Like I I'll just I, I'd like all of those guys better than I like the and, guys and the that's Lions took. Totally understandable, but I think that they were very similar in the way that they go about it. Right? Yeah. Their their methodology but the, towards and that's what it's gonna the take. types of players it's, that it's, they pick. It's gonna take that methodology over a three to five year span. Yeah. Like. We can't say – Like, whatever you what do, just stick to the plan. That's right. Like, even if you suck this year again. In, yeah, in four years – let us again. In four years, we'll look at you and say, okay. Yeah. How how we doing now? Yeah. At just some point build in time – Like, don't get impatient. Bill gets a, Tom fixes a lot of mistakes. Yes. He's the best quarterback to ever play, and he also takes friendly deals for the team. Yes. And – yeah, and you're not gonna have a lot of a lot of, yeah, a lot of guys like. That. I don't know that you can ask guys to be that. I don't. Like, well, Matt I, Stafford definitely doesn't. No, like, but like Tom gets a pet. His wife makes more money than him. She's yeah. like worth two hundred million dollars. Like, it's fine. It's easy for him to take less to win. It's, it's hard for other guys to do that. Uh, Buffalo Bills A plus. <laughs> How you feel about that? Ed Oliver, first round. 
They discussed trading up as high as number three. Yep, they, That's why we talked about the Raiders and everybody that, else. That were begging, on the phone, begging with everybody, yep. let me come get my guy. Turns out it was completely unnecessary. Oliver dropped to him. Right. Uh, other than that, uh, I mean, they, they got great value across the board. Yeah. I mean, Cody, I Ford, say, Cody Ford should have been a first-rounder. Yep. Singletary was Singletary big. was no. great under um, – uh, Lane Kiffin, yep. Dawson Knox. I thought he was going to be a uh, a second round guy, tight end out of Ole Miss. That's right. Uh, I mean, no, they 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 drafted well in value. I would give them a very good grade on a on a different level. You and I had like this a team need. I'm not. I'm not in the Ed Oliver camp. Every everything I read said, and I guess it's just because they're both little guys compared to the Aaron position Donald. they play. Yeah. It was a, oh, this, this, he could be Aaron Donald. Well, holy, holy crap. That's, that's like the, the top one <laughs> or two best defensive players in all of football. Like, like you, you think he could it's just either be him that? or, like, uh, or Khalil Mack. Yeah, you like, think he's yeah, going to be that? Like, like he could be that or he's just short and plays the same position. And they're both brown. Like, like he, he could be like what, comparable. Like, what do you mean he could be Aaron Donald? Like, yeah, I don't see that. Me and you watched his league a lot. We yeah, watched we watched Houston play American a lot because we a whole lot. We often had money on those games. That's right. We 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 know that conference better than most people that cover this thing nationally. Bet the over. Uh, bet the over, over on the bet, on the Cougars. Bet, bet the over on the Cougars. That's right. Yep. And we'll be doing it again this year. With he the, never really scared anybody. Yeah. And maybe it's because he was the only guy on the team, and so they could take him out of games. But it's, if you want to be Aaron Donald, you got to break a double team. Yeah. Especially a double team from like Tulane or or you know some one of those teams. Like you can't. Well, it's a, you, so you it's, what, it's what it's what Sam it's what Sam said on I think it was Sam it, or Scuzz one of the other uh, said on the live thing it, it Quentin Williams is more like Aaron Donald than Ed Oliver yes based simply on the fact that Williams is a three hundred and fifty pound bar of soap that's right you can't get him he's gonna slide through somehow that's how Donald does it. That's right. He finds creases. He finds a spot to get to the quarterback. And I don't think Ed Oliver does that. I think I, he could be I a think, fine player. I think he could be a fine player. I My only knock on him is the comparison. The only comparison I ever heard was Donald. Yeah. And I just thought that you, you can't do that. You can't put that label on this kid. That would literally be like saying, oh, I, I, I think Drew Locke is going to be Tom Brady. Like, Hang on, huh? Well, yeah. I mean, they're both, you know, 6'5", laser arms coming out of college, whatever. Like, more, but that's not, that's not what we're talking about here. They're not They're not just both, you know, upper middle class white guys that, that went to, to went to you know, high-end education schools and, and came out and played football. Like, that's, you're comparing them to the best football player of all time. You can't just say, well, they look a lot alike, and so that's my comparison. That's not how this works. That's an unacceptable thing Maybe it's the media that's done that, but because of that, I am not a fan. I will tell you this. I've liked the Bills the last couple of years. I yeah. like their coaching. I don't know how much talent they have on that team, but I like Sean McDermott. Yeah, I can I like I can agree with Sean that. McDermott, and, and, and if anybody's going to get the most out of him, I'm in on that. Uh, I will go on and tell anybody that is actually listening or, or watching – we're not going to make it to the other topics. That's fine. But we're going to keep rolling with this I, right I like, now. I'm, I'm good with this. This, Yeah, this actually this works out pretty well. Uh, there's no need to, to overflow no. topics here. Uh, Denver Broncos, A-plus grade. The Broncos uh, could have chosen the quarterback you early. The team. You, skip, you skipped a whole bunch. Where? The Bills at Buffalo, nine. Buffalo at The ten. Lions at eight. Jacksonville at seven. Giants After at Denver, six. After Denver, Pittsburgh traded up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay. just going based on uh, going that, based what the original. On yeah. I'm going based on the rankings of who got picked where. Sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, so Denver now, A-plus grade is what they were given. I don't know that I agree with the A-plus. I think Noah Fant is, is good. I think Dalton Risner was good value. Yep, I agree with that. Uh, I'm okay I think with that pick. Drew Locke. This good, was your guy in college now. Good value. Before the combine and everything, he was like the quarterback that you thought could be the guy. Yeah, and I still think he could be. But as far as, like, accuracy and what and, – and here's the thing that Locke said himself, right? He said, you want to grade me on accuracy? He said, 
Not one quarterback in the country threw the ball downfield 50-plus yards more than I did. And he's right. The stats yeah, show that. Hang on now. They were last they were year, throwing bombs. Last year, we, we all collectively crushed Josh Allen, the other Josh Allen, because of his accuracy was bad. But all he did his was accuracy throw, is still bad. But, but he didn't, all he did was throw fifty plus bombs. He didn't throw fifty plus bombs at the same level that Drew Locke did. Well, that's the offense they ran, and that's also giving yeah, up that's 40 a, points Wyoming, a game. Wyoming, that like hurts. Josh Allen, we have seen cannot hit like from here to right hey, there. Hey, he he led that team last year. He yeah, was, and they, they he did was fine. Way better than I thought he was. Yeah, be now last I, year. I'll admit that. I'll admit way that. Way better, like not Drew, even close. Drew Locke, I do like Drew Locke a lot. I don't like that he went to the Broncos because, like you've said before, I, they're cursed. I think Elway's cursed. Yeah. I, I think Elway's, Elway's God-given greatness is going to be that this is you. Now your your payment for that is you're going to be bad at picking quarterbacks. Yeah, you're going to suck at this. So, so congratulations, you got a job, but what you had to give up in the past life to, to, to be the Hall of Fame quarterback, one of the greatest of all time, is you're going to be really bad at this, and now this is your job. Uh, who do they have late? Anybody of uh, of note? No, um, Dewan I mean, Winfrey. Yeah, let's say yeah, they took Dewan Winfrey. Um, and they took Justin Hollins from Oregon. He he was pretty good in college. Yeah, Drewont Jones. Yeah. was was okay at Ohio State. He was one of those that they, uh, uh, Greg Schiano said was. One of the best linemen he's ever seen. Yeah. You know, this is the best defense he's ever coached, et cetera. Uh, let's move on. Next up, okay. uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Now, they're, I don't know how their grade is overall. I, I do think they got the best offensive line. They, oh, yeah. They the first offensive line. They, uh, they went and got somebody and said, we got to get better in the trenches. They got a B grade. They did that. And I think that that's, uh, that's about right. Uh, Jonah Williams, I, I don't care what his measurables are. I agree. Uh, the metrics don't matter. Drew Sample, I think, was a disaster of a pick. I, I, there was no reason to take him at fifty-two uh, out of can, Washington. He's a he's a blocking tight end. Can I can but can I ask a question? Yeah. Why in the hell did they not go out and get Rosen? Well, I mean, they did draft uh, Ryan Finley. Well, well, Okay, once in the fourth again, round. Once again, I'm going to ask: Why in the hell did they not go out and get Rosen? I think Rosen's better than Andy Dalton today. I think I might agree with that. Today. So you so you trade Drew Sample for Josh Rosen on this team right now. Yeah. In Cincinnati. I I think that's a I just think that's a better move. There's six teams that should have went out and got Josh Rosen when I saw for the price that he went for. Yeah. I was like, What what the hell are you all doing? Uh, well they just at at one point they just wanted to get rid of him. Like I that know was, that. Um, but if you were going to do that, at least get something decent. Uh, they did get Rodney Anderson, so that was cool. Uh, Jermaine Pratt. Uh, I mean, Rodney Anderson, like when he was healthy for Oklahoma. Yeah. You remember the uh, the the year where they where Baker had him? That's right. That dude was a beast. Yep. I mean, he ran all over Georgia. Like like no SEC running back had done all year. Yeah, that was an, that whole offensive scheme was. I, just I'm with you, but I, I'm though. telling you, he was. It's so hard to he grade could pound guys. the rock, man. For me, excuse me. It's so hard for me to grade some of these elite skill level guys, skill level guys that played on a team that was surrounded by nothing but five star offensive line quarterback and skill level guys. Yeah, four four of the offensive how you, linemen. How do you four, guard any of those guys? Yeah, how do you for Oklahoma. All the, or, 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 th- there's no defense for that. Yeah, all, so, all four that came out for Oklahoma yeah, got right. drafted. Yeah, so. but but that's that's my that was my issue with Josh Jacobs is. is what other offense is he going to be on where the skill around him is going to be like nobody's worried about the guy in the backfield catching the football? So I mean, he, you gets get a to, point. he gets to screen out there, catch the football, and cut people up. He can't do that. But, not, but at least he's got Antonio Brown and Hunter Renfro to take Hunter him. Renfro. <laughs> Hunter Renfro. We're going to get to a guy that was drafted in the first round that ran a substantially faster 40 time than Hunter Renfro as a defensive lineman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Renfro was never going to be fast. I don't know how your Patriots didn't get Renfro. I got no idea. Because is, all our white guys are fast. He's an incredible route runner. All, no, all our white guys are fast. I, 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 all, don't, I don't buy that. You don't? I don't buy that. I don't think Jules is fast. That's the fastest Jewish man on the planet. 
I'll t- I don't know that to be certain. Number 12. I would bet that. The Green Bay Packers. They got a C grade. I don't think they did a good job. Uh, and this is not me crapping on Aaron Rodgers. I just No, because I, I don't think Aaron Rodgers like actually picks. made the picks. Rashawn Gary, I think that was a reach at 12. Uh, I just I don't I don't think he's that good. Darnell Savage, uh, again a reach. They traded back into the first round to get Darnell to Savage to get a safety to get a safety that that would have been there. Don't late in the second round, maybe even the third round. I just don't know what some of these GMs uh, are doing. Now I will say this: Jay Sternberger, that's a dude. That's yeah. a real dude. Okay, now that's a real tight end. But yeah. Aaron Rodgers has had great tight ends in the past. Aaron Rodgers has never thrown the football consistently to tight ends. Yeah. Never. Dexter Williams. Remember, remember, I like remember Dexter when he Williams. got Michael Bennett and everybody was like, oh, he's never yeah. had a tight end this good. We all forget, Jermichael Finley, when he had Jermichael Finley, was an all-pro tight end. He's one of the top two or three tight ends in the league. Never Rodgers threw it to him. Never touched him. Never. Nope. Nope. You're right. Um, so I, I, t- Ty Summers is so the best okay. player. I, I'm with you on that. The best player I think they got in this draft is a uh, guy Jenkins? I don't think they're gonna, their quarterback is going to throw the ball to. Oh yeah, Jace. Uh, yeah. Now I think Jenkins was actually like really good value, uh, the center from Mississippi State. Yeah, and they, he they he was projected line. maybe to be a first round guy. They they need offensive line. Help. Yeah, and they I think need I think that he helped shore that up a little bit. But they they did nothing else for the offensive line. Right. Uh, Sternberger can block. He's a blocking tight end, and he led the SEC in touchdown receptions for tight ends last year. I I, I like Sternberger. I wish he was. I wish he was in that red, white, and blue. Yeah, yeah. He would be a great Patriot because he can block and he uh, can that's, catch touchdowns. That's what I said on the uh, he, on the live he's, thing. He's the Patriot. Though. He's the guy I want it, not the other guy. The other guys don't block. Miami Dolphins, B minus. Uh, Do this they thing give him said, credit for Rosen? Because if you give him credit for a second round pick of Josh Rosen, I think this is an A. Uh, I don't think that they. I don't think that they did that. Okay. Um, carry on. This guy. Man, Walter Football went in on Rosen on this. I know. Have you seen it? I know. No, he, but he but said Miami he, squandered when, a second round choice yeah. in a trade for Josh Rosen. When he doesn't like somebody, he oh he goes he in. Killed him. Uh, he I read, said I read some of it. horrible decision as Rosen has zero passion for football and would rather party his life away, much like Blake Portals. Sure, the Dolphins got a quote discount on Rosen after trading down, but this is like someone offering to sell you a stick of sugarless gum for a hundred dollars. After initially offering 150, you're getting 33 percent off. But who cares? So that is insane. I, 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 this is what I enjoy about this guy. This we take a take a lesson from from my relationship with this individual. I don't even know is we disagree a lot, and I, you still like him. I really like the way he goes about his business. Yeah, I I vehemently disagree with that completely. Anyway, um. Who do they? Who else did they take? Right. Chandler Cox, I with, thought was pretty good. With, with all, seventh round, Miles Gaskin, a seventh round pick. Yeah. Like Miles Gaskin no. was legit no. at Washington. Yeah, no, they. they I thought they did well. Christian um, Wilkins, I thought was I, a great pick. Yes, and I thought Michael Deller, uh, Deller is a is a good pick. When all else fails, if you need offensive line help, you can still go to the University of Washington and just say, "Who's the highest guy that played at Wisconsin?" Wisconsin, Washington? yeah, you said Washington. I was looking, I was looking at Gaskins. Who's who's the highest rated guy at Wisconsin? Yeah, I'll just take that guy. Uh, also, that's still true today. Another Wisconsin guy, linebacker years. that they got in the fifth round, Andrew Van Ginkle. <laughs> I really hope that he becomes something know, big because I, I would love to talk about Van Ginkle. Yeah, that, that's just a great name. As much Wisconsin football as I've watched over the last couple of years, I he's a lot of fun. I can't say that I know a ton about him, but yeah, he's good. Uh, Atlanta Falcons C minus grade. Uh, it said the goals entering the 2019 NFL draft. Atlanta's defense was decimated by injuries. That doesn't mean the team doesn't need upgrades on its stop unit. Defensive line in particular, very soft. Multiple draft choices must be used to strengthen that area. Meanwhile, the offensive line needs help as well for the offense to return to its 2016 glory days. Well, they, they went after and they got some offensive They got linemen. some offensive yeah. linemen early. Yeah. They got two in the first round. Right. I think that Caleb McGarry was a reach. But they, if that's your dude. But they needed a tackle, and they weren't going to have a pick in the second or third round. Yeah, so, so if, if that's your guy, then you just you got to take what you can get. Uh, and they had to take him at 31. So the best ones were obviously off the board. Um, Chris O-line Lindstrom might be, a, might be one of those positions that's worth trading up for because they cost so much. Yeah, Chris Lindstrom, offensive guard from uh, Boston College. Yep. That's uh, 
I, th- I think that's a pretty good pick. I do too. Like he's, no, I, he's I think, a hoss in I the think they need an offensive line help. I think they got offensive line help. Um, other than that, Anybody I mean, they, else? they took else. no nobody. That's like Kendall Sheffield, cornerback in the fourth round. Like I was surprised that he lasted to the fourth round, but you DBs know. and receivers fell in this draft. Yeah, big that, time. That was just what what happened. Um, Who you got? Let's see, Washington Redskins number fifteen team. Uh, this is this is one I'm almost scared to put my name on that I like them because I feel like it's just not going to age well. Well, it, I mean, he gave him an A. I really, really liked what they did. I think I, Haskins was a good pick. I think I think Haskins, Montez Sweat was a good pick. I think Haskins is the second best quarterback in this draft and should have went fourth to the Giants. Yeah, I mean, you um, you waited until the third round to get Terry McLaurin, which was pretty good. Bryce Love was I, good. I love Montez Sweat. That's. Um, that's the player from from Mississippi State. That yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, that ran like two miles per hour faster than Hunter Renfro. Uh, Ross Pierce Baker from Alabama. Yes, of course they had to take an Alabama guy. I think it's uh, mandatory at this point. I, that's what the Redskins do. Yeah, they've got um, they've got like twelve at least. But I mean, you that's get Bryce Love in a in in the fourth round and Terry McLaurin in the third. You got two first rounders, both of whom I believe will be starting this year. My only fear with Haskins is. I I do think the Redskins are on. At some point in time, they need to figure out what they're doing with Jay Gruden. And is he in or is he out? Yeah. And if Haskins gets some type of Rosen treatment where he's got a lame duck coach and they don't have a good rookie year with him, because I think Haskins has got to start. I think he knows he's got to start. They don't have another quarterback. Well, they got Case Keenum. Oh, Case. No, they don't. They've got. Oh, they did trade for Case. Yeah. Forgot about that, and they also have the other, which case. I think works out well. They've got for... both cases. Who's the other case from Texas? Case McCoy. McCoy. Yeah, he's he's still it's, there. It, he it's hurt. Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. It, 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 he's it's got a brother thing. named Case. Yes, That's, um, but yeah, Colt McCoy is still coming off of the uh, the leg injury. But he'll be he'll be ready by by opening day. They hope. But he'll be the backup, so Haskin can maybe can wait. Um, um, but yeah, he'll 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 wait around a little bit and whatnot, which will be fine because. He's only got one year of starting experience. That's so, like, the, that's the one thing that scares me about him. Yeah, is he hasn't seen live bullets and he's about to go into the NFL. Yeah, uh, Carolina Panthers sixteen uh, got a C grade. I don't they, disagree with that. I think they they needed offensive line help, and, and I don't think they got it. it. They didn't go get it at all. Like it, they oh. yeah. The Brian Burns thing was fine. My laptop is dying. Well, then we're going to have to speed through this thing. No. Um, let's see. They got they offensive tackle Greg, Greg Little. Little. Greg, Greg Little is I did not. Uh, weak. Yeah, that we'll, was, we'll say that. I was, not, I was not a fan of the Greg Little. He pick. got blown up so often against good defensive teams. All right. I'm glad we're here, and I'm glad I'm looking at this because he's not on there, and I realized why. First, I really do like the Will Greer pick. Yeah, Greer was fine. I think they, Christian Miller was a good pick. They player. had to find – life after Cam because we don't know how long Cam can keep playing. And last couple of years, the backups for Cam when he gets hurt. Jimmy Clausen and it's whoever. Awful. Yeah, it's, it's really awful. bad. The best player, mark my words right now, the best player, the best running back out of this draft went undrafted. Sir Elijah Holyfield. I don't care about his slow 40 time. That guy is a grown-ass man. He averages eight yards a carry against the SEC defense. He averaged it against Alabama. He averaged it against Auburn. He averaged it against LSU. And Kirby Smart let him touch the ball somewhere between eight and 12 times a game, which is the only reason they didn't win a lot of those games. Well, that's that's the reason that people gave for Josh Jacobs going so high was that he only touched it eight to 12 times. It's a game. I don't understand how he got undrafted. Now I know his forty time was garbage. Well, it wasn't. It I wasn't just ex- the forty time. But it I, was yeah, like com- everything about the combine. I can't was explain bad. that. I know this. I watched him play football the last two years, and that guy devastated the SEC. It, this ain't no. This ain't no MAC football. Right? No. This ain't. This ain't no WAC football. This ain't Pac twelve or Big twelve football. This well, I mean, is the uh, SEC. This is eighty percent of the NFL players come from this league. Miles Gaskin. Went seventh round. Like, running backs were not a high priority. But he went undrafted. I know. Undrafted. That guy, if if worst case scenario, he's going to now be the goal line guy so they can take those carries off of Cam. 
and not have to worry about getting Christian Caffrey hurt. Or they're going to end up putting him in the backfield with McCaffrey and Cam and someone please design a defense that can stop that. Because if Cam is healthy, I'm telling you, he's going to average seven, eight yards a touch in the NFL. Yeah. He's just a monster. He's the absolute strongest running back I've ever seen since Bo Jackson or Herschel Walker. I haven't in modern-day football seen somebody that strong. I don't care how fast he is. My goal is to get four yards of carry in the running game. Yeah. That guy is going to get it, and I don't give a damn how quick he is. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, next up, Cleveland Browns. Your brownies. Gave him a C plus. Yeah, that's garbage. <laughs> It's garbage. It's garbage. Um, all right. Well, I mean, tell me, tell me what what they did differently. Well, what first, we... we need to have a. Con- I do want to make sure we had some time to do this. I almost missed it because I thought we were going to run out of time. It's. Uh, I mean, we're getting close to but, it. But but I'm going to take some time to go on this tangent for a minute. The Cleveland Browns this year is the exact reason why, in a draft like this, especially. If you have a quarterback under a reasonable contract and you have a lot of pieces already in place and you're ready to make that next step, you trade for you spend draft capital and you spend free agent money that you got to spend anyway. Yeah. And you go out and you because you got to pay twice, you got to pay in the draft and you got to pay in the money to go get a guy like Odell Beckham. Yeah. Because there is nobody, mark my words. There is nobody in this draft from first round to seventh round that will be anywhere as, as good as, as Odell, Odell Beckham. Beckham. Right, I'm with you. There's nobody there that can do that. So they got Odell Beckham for a first round pick. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I would like to see that first round pick be one eighth of what Odell is because I don't think it's going to happen. And then after that, what does Cleveland need? defensive help because look yep. at that offense. We've talked all offseason about what they've done on the offense and how amazing this offense is. Now they got they got some defensive guys. I think Miles Garrett is still the biggest monster in the NFL. That's that's a sleeping giant waking yes. to be awake. He's not Mac yet, but I think he could but be he's getting there. Mac. They got they Greedy out. Williams. Boy, Greedy Williams. Yeah. They loaded up, man. They loaded up. Boy, now, from BYU, it, uh, I think Taki Taki from BYU, I I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I think this guy's a leader. I mean, maybe he is. I don't know, but it like. But I, they I don't need, know. They need linebacker help. That's just what they need. They let all the linebackers go. Well, I'll tell you this: they got Mac Wilson, yeah. and he fell all the way to the fifth round. Yep. And this is one of the players that Alabama or that that Nick Saban had his rant about. Yeah. And Jimbo Fisher just yesterday came out and said, "If you ain't got a top two round grade." Don't do it. Don't come out. It's stupid because you don't know. And with Mac Wilson, I mean, there's a lot of money left on the table for the first three to four years because he did not go in the third round. He was he had a third round grade and dropped all the way to the fifth round. True. And that happens every single year. True. There were fifty some odd guys that came out early that didn't get drafted. And yes, everybody's situation is different, right? Sometimes you got guys that that have families that Travion Williams from Texas A and M. He he didn't even get uh, no he got drafted what sixth round yeah. something like that like, maybe seventh round. Um, but he was he was another guy that had like a third or fourth round pick like grade. But he's got a a baby on the way. Yeah, and his Greedy, his Greedy's, girlfriend Greedy's the same way. Yeah, Greedy made it clear. It, but I'm Greedy went out. second round. But he like, went second round. But cornerbacks fail, man. Yo, cornerbacks I mean, fail. He, he should Greedy. Probably should have been a first round guy, but all all but, cornerbacks fell. Yeah, all there should have never there shouldn't have been a single cornerback that win the first. Right, but Mac Wilson, like I said, that as far as value goes, you got this dude in the fifth round. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yes, he has the propensity, uh, <laughs> if I said that right, to sure. to run himself out of plays. If you can get him, and that's what Nick Saban was so worried about was. This guy, if if we can slow him down and get him to process things yeah. a little quicker, and and yes, you want your guys to be fast, but you don't want them so fast that they're running around without thinking what they're doing sure. or without knowing what they're doing. But Wilson can absolutely make plays. Uh, but I, another thing I don't like about this is fifth round they took a damn kicker. 
Yeah, now that once and, it, again, and Austin Siebert you know is fine. He no, was great at Oklahoma. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But unless he can boot sixty-five yarders on those the regular, just, those are just free agent guys, man. You just don't spend. Yeah, you need the Patriots and Seahawks. Just get this. It, this you need this is what too uh, many bites at the apple. You can't be wasting bites. This is what uh, this is what Walter Football said. Uh, stop it with these kickers already and yeah. draft players who will make it so you don't need a kicker. Right. It makes no sense to draft a kicker before round seven. I know you know what? I know that I know that, that the Browns don't need a running back. You know who I would have taken? I'd have taken Eliza Holyfield right here. I'd have taken Eliza Holyfield right it, here. It would have been more useful. And I'd have said, Hey, check out this backfield, boys. Uh, now yeah. look at this offense. Yeah, no, you're right. Oh, Chubb, you need to take a break. We're going to put Eliza in. Yep, we're going to oh, put Eliza in on this one. you need to take a break? Oh, we're going to put Hunt in. Who are y'all stopping, guys? Oh, we're dead. Oh, we completely did. All right. on my end, so. Well, then let's uh, let's rush through the last little bit. Hopefully we don't miss uh, y'all's teams if you're still watching. No, we're going to keep going. We'll we get them all. Minnesota Vikings got a B grade. Uh, Vikings, big mistake by paying Kirk Cousins so much guaranteed money and then compounded that error by, fa- uh, by failing to protect him. Uh, I do they used they Garrett Bradbury. Get, I do think they need to get offensive line help. And yep. They did. They did, but they didn't as much as I thought they could or should. Yeah. They uh, they used their second rounder on Irv Smith Jr. I think that works out well. That's right. Uh, Kyle Rudolph is heading for free agency, so that, that fills that need. Um, I mean, other than that, it you know, okay. Like, a B grade is fine. Tennessee Titans, he one, gave – One of my favorite drafts of the weekend. Uh, the Vikings? No, or the Titans. 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 Titans uh, got help for Marcus Mariota by signing Roger Seffold and Adam Humphreys, so that works out well. Um, but as far as the draft goes, they got a player that's not going to play in the first year, in the first round. But Jeffrey Simmons is an absolute beast. When he gets there. Yeah, he's it's going to be he's, he's insane. Gonna be freak. Um, he's going to be stellar in 2020 that does and beyond. That doesn't me at all. They got AJ Brown. I think that was great. I think he's. Uh, I think he's great. I just worry about earlier when talking about who's going to be the best receiver. I just worry about who's going to be throwing him the ball. I mean, you you got a point. If Mariota's their guy for the next five years, I'm I'm a little worried about that team. Well, mainly because he he may not be healthy. The whole it's time. his availability. It's not his ability. Yeah, because I think he's when, when he's, he's there, he's there. Yeah, no, he's, he's great, a dude. Uh, Nate Davis and Amani Hooker, great bargains. Yep. Uh, I, you know, liked, need... I liked what they did. I, all those guys are just athletes, man. They went and got freak athletes. Yeah. It's, I mean, they he gave them an A, yeah. and that's really good. Steelers got an A-, minus, uh, hoping for Devin Bush. Yeah. To, uh, I like it, Bush a lot. It, they moved up for him. I don't know that I would have – I mean, 10 just seemed a little – a little high. If you don't move up there, you don't get him. I I was very upset when they made the move up. I'm watching on my phone while I'm watching the end game, and I see him make a trade up, and I think they're going to get him. Well, it, so the Westlock guys believe that they moved up to ten specifically so that the Bengals wouldn't draft him. And, and they could be right. That, that that wouldn't. I didn't think of that, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um. So I I do think Devin Bush will be fine. I just. They think that he will develop into the replacement for Shazier, but I don't think it's this year. I think oh, he's no. got to develop. No, well, linebackers, I mean, it's a yeah, quarterback it takes, position. It takes, takes time. some time to learn. Uh, they As drafted edge rusher, it's different. They drafted Isaiah Bugs. Uh, let's see, they took uh, Deontay Johnson and Zach Gentry. Yeah, I was going to say, Deon- Johnson's the, yeah. the receiver out of Tulane. To- uh, Toledo. Yeah. Toledo. Toledo. Yeah. Toledo. Yeah. I have no idea who this guy is. I'm just working under the assumption in three years he's going to be one of the best receivers in football. Yeah. Because this is what they do, right? They take guys from little schools that nobody's ever heard of before. Yeah. And they're like, oh, here's Antonio Brown. Oh, Boom. Central here's Michigan. Ward. Here's Boom. Oh, Hines went to a big school. But yeah, he yeah. went to Georgia. Yeah. But he played quarterback in Georgia. So, <laughs> yeah, like, like, it's, it's, like, yeah. Like, they just they just do this. Yeah. So, I mean, they've done I'm it forever. under the assumption that. Seahawks got a D. I like You this. liked them. I we talked about that early on. Yeah, we can. Um, we can roll through them if you want. But. That's a, we'll we'll roll past yeah. them because it, uh, DK Metcalf cool. Some of the other stuff was eh, but you liked it. So I liked it. They, they got they, a lot of bites at the apple, and they drafted for need, and that's a different way of drafting. Yeah. So of course, draft guys are going to think it's wrong. At four picks, they finished with eleven picks. They they I, got at, a lot of chances. Like at some point in time, one of them's going to hit. If one or two of them hit, they're really good. Yeah, I agree. If they only had four picks, and they make those four picks, and none of them hit. That's not good. I think I think it's good. Yeah. So. Um, Baltimore A. 
You think that's I, good? I really like Hollywood Brown. I, I was really, really like him. skeptical. I worry about, about him because. Of, so I've got to change my thinking for a minute. When it comes to Lamar Jackson, I've watched him one year in the NFL, and so I have this opinion of him in the NFL. Uh, he's a running quarterback, doesn't throw the ball well. At Louisville, he broke every record in college football for throwing the ball. He was deadly accurate. He was incredible at throwing the football. I just can't think that is a product of eight. The ACC plays decent defense. This, this ain't no uh, one of the some leagues. some of okay. the ACC does. Yeah. The bad defense is Louisville, so you don't have to play against them. Yeah. So you can't think, can't say that that gives you credit. I know he was under Bobby Petrino's system, and so that might be a part of it. I think Hollywood Brown and Jackson. Could set the league on fire. It's it's possible. I'm, now I'll tell you this: being a Browns they, fan, I'm not really. They also about got uh, Justice scary. Hill from yeah. Oklahoma State, and he yeah. is a burner. That dude is uh, lightning fast. They got uh, and ben, I love running backs yeah. with running quarterbacks. Oh uh, yeah, because it, he you can't guard both with your linebacker. He and Mark Ingram with I yeah. mean that, that that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, guard Ben Powers. Totally uh, I think he'll start kind of early. That'll be good. They got a uh, edge rusher Jalen Ferguson. At, I mean that was a steal, and then they they drafted Trace McSorley, yeah. which was a little bit weird. But could I could totally see Trace McSorley if, being uh, Julian Edelman like? Oh, okay. I All could right. totally see. So that. a lot of people thought, hey, if you're gonna have a, a a a quarterback like Jackson, you need a backup that can be mobile and athletic. Yeah, and that made sense to me. Is I don't know that they're gonna try to play him at a different position. I think they need a backup that can run the same offense he runs so you don't have to completely change Or you could just keep down. one other guy on the right. So they've yeah. already got Robert Griffin the third. That's right. Well, but I don't think RG3 but, is staying away. I mean, I was staying around. Well, I mean, he's, he's still got a year left on that contract. I know that, but, but long but term. If, 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 long no, term. long term, like, maybe he's not. not. He's not going to be a backup next year, after, you know, after this year. Maybe not. So. But if nobody wants him, mm. I mean, you go where the money is, right? Maybe. Uh, but either way, I think the Ravens did pretty good. I think they did good. The teams that I think did really good, I hate because so many of them are in the AFC. Yeah, you're. But well, I, I know you're not a fan of the Ravens anyway. No, I'm just a, it's the one team that I hate more than anyone else. <laughs> the Houston Texans with an F. Is there anything really to? They did bad, and I thought they did bad. Yeah. I thought nobody they picked wowed me, and I'm not saying you got to go make that. I mean, just like get a get a like a really good offensive lineman. Like, yeah, like that stabilize. Hang on. Get a I mean, good offensive they, lineman because your quarterback got hurt so bad last year he couldn't fly on a plane to the game. Well, it, so the the issue is the Eagles traded up and got Andre Dillard, who is who they were hoping that's for. Right. But but that's your fault. That's and, yeah, your fault. and they and they panicked you and they took just, Titus Howard. I know, God, which what? I know. Listen, like but he's that's your a fault. It, but now I will say this: Go Titus Howard, guy. he's. 350 pounds, like six foot six, massive. And he's developmental, so like maybe you can, but he, he ain't going to help this year. We trust their offensive line coaching staff to do that. Not I mean, we're not talking about but, I mean, Dante Bill O'Brien is an offensive line guy. No, no, he's not. No, he's well, not. That's, that's how we started out. Well, when he was with the Patriots, he wasn't because that was Dante Scarnecchia, <laughs> the greatest <laughs> offensive line god. On the planet. Well, he was around him, so he should know something. No, I don't think that you should be able to retain something. I don't know what he does. But he he does it, and he does it well. Yeah. Chicago Bears, you Bears, so C+. They, plus. they gave him a bad – and once again, take their first-round pick and insert Khalil Mack there. Yeah. I think, I think that grade's pretty damn good. Yeah. Because, oh, I have the best they, defensive player in football – Thank you very much. They they got some more weapons. They got Riley Ridley. Uh, he was a steal in the uh, in the fourth frame. Um, yeah, Duke Shelley I think was but was fine because at of Khalil. You don't have their first and your second pick. Yeah. I get that. So you're not going to get a great grade. But uh, the Eagles number twenty five. They got a B. I thought they did well. I think the Eagles did, did really really well. Really, uh, the Andre Dillard thing was, yeah, that was awesome. Big. That was and big. I told the guys on the uh, on the live thing that Dillard was one of the guys that you. You notice, yes. Like, it, you know, when you're watching a game and you can just see the difference. Like, it's like going to a high school game and you can tell which ones are D one prospects and which That's ones right. aren't. Who's, who's going to go play like, big boy ball? 
Andre Dillard, you could always see that he was a difference maker on that offensive line. That's right. And he was the best out of all of them. Who um, was it last year ended up going to the Colts? Quentin Nelson? Yeah. Like, same thing. Like, I watched that guy play football, and he just bullies people. He's in the NFL now. Yeah. And he's taking other pros, and he's picking on them. Yeah. He's just, like, putting them in a locker. It's just different. You see yeah. an offensive lineman who's great. If, if you know what you're looking at, you can kind of tell. No, you're right about that. That guy's going to be uh, good. They got Miles Sanders. They got uh, J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. I do think Sanders can take that backfield because that backfield's kind of been a cluster. They just have to throw a bunch of dudes there, but nobody's really been a star. I think he has a chance to be I a star. I think he could be a star. I yeah. really do. I think the same thing. So we're, we're kind of in agree. Indianapolis Colts got an A. They always get an A. Well, that's not true. It's just not true. Last year they got an A. The last couple of years before that, they've drafted really bad. That's – I. I think they're going to be getting A's a lot. Well, if, if they keep that front if they keep this together, front office, the this this front office stays, is awesome. Stays in control. We're good. Um, it, look, their their first pick was in the second uh, round, mm-hmm. Rakia Sin, yep. which is one of the all time greatest Fo- names. It's a great football name, uh, Rock Yasin. like Y A dash S I N. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, the best part about their draft was, uh. uh Pat McAfee. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that was absolute... Titans fans. Yeah. Bobby Okariki. Okariki. So I really like Campbell. I yeah. think Campbell is super athletic, crazy athletic, and will go really well pairing with um Oh man, my name just my just went completely blank. The other receiver, the fast guy, TJ Ty Montgomery. Ty Ty oh. nope, uh T.J. Yellen, not not T.J. Yellen. Wow, I can't believe that we're doing this right now. Wow, who is what is his name? It's Ty something. He was he he played at Florida International. I know. I'm I'm I'm, I kind of hate myself right now. Uh, what is yeah? Are you? How are you looking it up? I'm just trying to Google Colts wide receiver. T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton. I knew. (laughs) How did I? That was T.J. Yates. T.J. Yellen. T.Y. Hilton. That's it. That was. Pathetic. Uh, hey, we have done dumber things, and it's True. okay. There's how many players in the NFL? Yeah, but I, I mean, should have known him. Come him, on, him on the opposite side of, of Hilton is that's. A big, I think Campbell could be big. Andrew Luck. Yeah, I think Andrew Luck got a nice new toy there. Oh, I like absolutely. I like that big a lot. I'm still a fan of Okariki. Okariki. Well, Okariki is a draft staple. He uh he should be on Monday Night Football. I'm I would. I would not. I want Pat that. McAfee. Pat McAfee, if you're watching I this, I really hate. One, we Monday want you to come Night on the show because the commentating so bad. But, but we would watch you on Monday Night Football. Dallas Cowboys got a C. I know you are not a big Cowboys fan, but I, I, I thought it was okay. I would say I thought the last now the last couple of years they have drafted really well. That yeah. 2016 draft that we looked at, that yeah. I went back and looked, they did they did great. They, they might be the best team in that draft. Uh, Connor McGovern. Uh, upgrade at uh you know uh, with blocking and That's whatnot, right. always, um, always boosting offensive line. I mean, yeah, they, they everything about this was was I, good. I just thought nothing Tristan spicy, Hill, I thought was okay, but 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 everything is stable. Yeah, and that's like they, what's, they didn't that's take a important. lot of like risks. No, and that's good. That's right. That's right. Uh, Mike Weber, get the pick out of Jerry. Great hand, value, and, uh, and and yeah, make some make something that's going to last. San Diego, well, San Angeles, San Angeles Chargers, B okay. plus. I, I like their picks a lot too. They, they uh, got just crazy athletic dudes. Yeah, they struggled in the trenches uh, against the Patriots anyway. So of course they went out and they took Jerry Tillery, who that's, that's one of the weirdest day. looking guys I you've know, ever seen in your life. But this is that dude. I think and that he's great. Front, yeah, that defensive front. Yeah, man. I mean that's. I, I think they. I think they did pretty well. So here's what I look at. In late round guys that didn't play at big boy schools that I don't know, I I go and look at. I don't care a lot about most of the combine stuff. I look at their sparks numbers. Just who are athletes? Your three cone, your your broad jump. Yeah. Like just who are the athletes? And they, I think, I think that's why I have kind of started liking the Colts more and more. The last couple, I mean, the Colts, the Chargers more and more. The last couple of years, they just they go get sparks dudes. guys. They just go get athletes. They're like, I don't know, hey man, we don't, I don't know, know where you're gonna play. Gonna be good or not. But that guy's a freak. <laughs> I don't want to block him. So uh, Kansas City got a C. I don't um, think they had a good weekend at all. No, they they 
needed help on defense. Well, they probably need to start looking for wide receivers. Yeah, they, they need that as well. So the pre-draft goals were written before Tyreek mm-hmm. uh, in that whole mess that, that we have not discussed. Now, they they reached and they went up and got Miko Hardeman. And Hardeman's fast. But I don't think he's the same kind of dude as Tyreek Hill. No. And they, there's not a lot of people no, no. in this world say, that there, are like Tyreek Hill. There's not another player in the league like him, so you can't just go replicate him. And But that's why I think it was a reach. Like, don't, don't – I think you're trying mess to mess up everything else. Yeah, hole. don't mess up everything else that you were planning on to go get a guy because like this that. guy messed up your weekend. Yeah, like it, and, and that's you. what I think they did. But I think this was a receiver deep draft with a lot of big receivers falling late. You got to spend those second, third, and fourth round picks on those guys. Yeah, get get Mahomes somebody because he's. I think he's losing his best guy, and I think he's losing him forever. Yeah. I, you're probably right. You're probably right. Uh, New Orleans Saints got a B plus, and now, then we got two more after this one. Okay. Let me tell you what I think about the Saints. I think the Saints and draft picks are like handing a child a $100 bill and send them to a candy store. <laughs> they, they don't give a damn about tomorrow. Every year they just keep trading away the future for draft picks today, in two years, they're going to have no picks. Oh, yeah. And no Drew Brees, nothing to show. They're just going all in. Yeah. Because they did last year. Usually teams can't do that back-to-back years. I was not expecting them to do that back-to-back years. And yet, here they are. They did it back-to-back years. I like the picks. But, man, at some point in time, you're going to be like, we we need some young talent, and we are out of picks. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson – Great value in the fourth round, um, but of course you didn't have to. That that wasn't one that you had to trade back That's in right. for. You had to get back for it. Um, they didn't have a bunch to work with, but they did. Uh, they did well with the resources that they had. They didn't have a lot to work with because they traded them away last year. Yeah, Los Angeles Rams got a B. I you love agree this? the running back, the um, boy from Memphis, uh, Daryl Henderson. Yes. Yep. Uh, let's see, Taylor Rapp. Um, that was great. David Long, great. Um, I mean, this this is uh, Henderson provides a nice insurance policy for Todd Gurley and his troubled knees. I think it's more than an insurance policy, but you know how we talked about this after the Super Bowl. I I think I think there are real worries for Todd. Yeah, I've never said this on air. I've told you this because you have a friend that you've introduced me to in the past named Todd, and my my like kind of weird meter went off. I have a few rules that I live life by. One never trust them, somebody named Todd? I never trust a man named yeah. Todd. Ever. Yep. I've never met a Todd. And your buddy Todd seems like a good dude. Oh, he's a good I dude. like hanging out with him. He was a fun time that night. I don't know that I trust him. And listen. Totally listen, fair. Todd Gurley, <laughs> every Rams fan's like, you know what? I get it. I get it. That like, bastard, he led us on all year. And then, and then we then, get to the playoffs and then it's C.J. Anderson? Nothing. What are we talking about? That guy. But now. I just can't trust a dude named Todd. Now you got. Daryl Henderson. Hey, yeah, Daryl. Hey, that's not a who Todd. can who can fly. And you in 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 Sean McVay's system and that kind of offense. Oh, oh, I'm excited to see that. We'll wrap this up with the New England Patriots. A minus grade. I think um, they had one of the best drafts out of everybody, and that's not the homerism being talking. I th- I, I th- no, I think they did really well. I think they got one of the best receivers in the thing. At I think Nikhil Harry, yep. big, physical, fast. Electric, I I, I I love the chase pick. Love that guy. Got to replace Gronk somewhere. Well, Walter Football thinks that uh, – that well, Chase Winovich is coming in. Damian Harris, great oh, value. No. He's going to be awesome. I think Damian Harris um, is going to be one of the better running backs. They think that uh, the Vikings' Kyle Rudolph is going to be your new tight end. Ooh, it depends on how much money he wants. Yeah. If, he's, if he's asking for the moon, he won't come. To, no, 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 to, no he won't come England. there. They don't do that. Um. Yeah, Chase Winovich, I think, is like that is an edge rusher so, from hell. So the best, the best thing about that guy. Let me tell you the best thing about that guy. As soon as the Patriots take him, all the media outlets start calling, and you know, hey, tell us about this, tell us about that. And his first response was, "Is I got to talk to the team. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not. He already knows the business. Yep. Say nothing." You treat them like mushrooms. You feed them shit and you keep them in the dark. Tell them nothing. You tell them nothing. 
and he already gets it. He already knows how many how many I rookie talk drafts to the team. got drafted, and before they even talked to their team and went and met them folks, anything said, I can't really give you interviews. I don't really know what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not. Sorry. It's smart kid. Smart. Very, very smart kid. He's very much feeling that gronk. I'm a goofball role. I think he's going to feel the quirky, weird, like the party guy. But like gronk, I think some of that's a shtick. Yeah. And and I think he's a really sharp, smart dude that's going to do really well in New England. I think I, I think agree. he fell real far. I was not expecting him to be there. No, I didn't expect that I, either. I thought that kid was was really good and was easy. Well, he to he outproduced guy. Rashawn Gary. I know, I know. Like it wasn't even close. I, I, so I don't know why he felt. Maybe it's because he is goofy. I don't know the answer to that. But that's a hey, New England ain't got no problem with goofy people. No, no, I'm cool with it. Yeah. All right, that's gonna wrap up today's show. Thank you for Look. going long for me. I oh really yeah, enjoyed that. No, that Those was uh, teams. that was that was a good time. We got to go through all 32 teams. Uh, if you have questions, you want us to talk about it. Send it in to us. You can follow me at Gary WCE. You can follow Chris. At Chris B. Giannini. Believe that. And we will see you guys again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.